Welcome back to part two of my episode with Charlie Rain. If you haven't already, please make sure you check out part one to get all caught up. We're picking up right where we left off and discussing advice to women in similar situations and how Charlie continues to move forward, take accountability, and heal after divorce. I thank Charlie for her vulnerability and her strength to share her story with us all. Now let's get into this amazing episode. What would be your advice to a woman who's listening, who's scared to leave because Mm. of financial reasons? Yeah. Um, Number one, this is going to be like a non-shameless plug of like, follow me, connect with me, maybe even get into my um, membership only because I like, I can't give advice in one podcast. Like there's so many levels that I've, of what I've learned and I'm talking like exit plan. Um, like see, you, you know, the saying, and this is, this would be my first tip of advice leap in the net will appear. I do believe that my first piece of advice is re ground in who your source is. And what I mean by that is we, God, God, we pray, we pray, we pray. God, show me a sign. God, what should I do? Should I stay? Should I go? I prayed that prayer for over a year. Mm. But by the time it got to a year later, I realized that I was praying because I knew the answer. I wasn't praying for the answer. I was praying for the how. But the how never shows up until you do it. Like You'll never know how you make it until you make it. Mm -hmm. So that to me is what leap in the net will appear. Now, that being said, I'm not sure yet if I literally mean leap, like just leave and then figure it out, because that's where I would say I'm putting together. I'm working behind the scenes on literally like an exit strategy for women, because it's almost like an underground railroad approach, because why I silenced myself was because I realized that. There is, like, I'll give this to my ex. He used to always be like, you don't need to put all your business online. And even my business coach would tell me, like, you see, you will go live on your way to the hospital when mm-hmm. the, like, I just got, like, hit and my arm's falling <laughs> yeah. off. And, I mean, God forbid, cancel, cancel. I'm not really right. saying that. But, like, it's like, look, guys, oh, my God. And it's like, no, like, you're supposed to tell that story After. years later right. when it's healed right. and it's done. And you can talk about it from, mm-hmm. like, a sound place, right? And so I, what I say by that is like, there is a way to strategize and plan your exit to where you cover the bases so that you don't get in the hole that I got in because, because I went live the way I did, Mm -hmm. I believe that was when I became the ops because he was like, oh, you telling this it bitch all. wants to yeah. go and air it out on the way out. Cool, bet. So it's like I'm sure he's over there. Like, shut the hell up. You hope we have an interview and you hope we can be friends, but yet you keep you keep talking about yeah. me. So it's like, unfortunately, you know the truth is the truth. I'm never gonna silence my truth. Right. But what I would say is like, don't try to out your man out the gate. Don't Mm -hmm. try to expose him because that's what I did in thinking I was going to get help. Mm -hmm. But to your point, I didn't get help. The women and men who could have helped me the most were crickets. The people who helped me were the most random people that came out the woodworks and were sending me money, were sending me words of encouragement. And I'm saying I had one girl, God bless her, and I'm not going to say any names today, but she knows who she is. She literally for probably six months straight sent me money consistently every month. Wow. And that, and so there was a part of me that was like, I'm not going to regret that I cried for help because I literally was desperate. Mm-hmm. However, I could have been a little less desperate and actually asked for help like from my mom or my brother. But I was like, I this is not their responsibility yeah. and I and can't also I feel like you had built a community I did so it was like you had everyone had been like on the road with you for so long that I felt like you felt that you needed to like share yeah. everything yeah. but you realized like this actually isn't for everyone it's to not know. for everyone and that was one of the biggest things I learned that protecting your privacy is powerful when mm. people like now like I don't really want people to like I really am like curious if when I find my king in the future if I'm gonna keep him like where (laughs) just his arm is showing right because it's like y'all are not gonna ruin 
what I have. Like mm -hmm. when you when people know too much, they can they can manipulate and maneuver too much. I really do um, understand the power of privacy now. Mm -hmm. So my advice would be like know that like God is in us, not in the sky. God is not a Santa Claus in the sky looking down and saying, Crystal, you're Charlie now, so you need to live as Charlie for another year before I can bless you. Like he, God is not a he. Yeah. God is the creator, the alpha and the omega, the end all, the everything. So when you, when you understand the power that's within you, that you are an extension of the God you're praying outside of yourself for, it's an inside job. You have to return inward. You have to get quiet and you have to ask yourself, okay, what's the first step? Mm -hmm. And that's why I said follow, connect, because I have kind of put together a framework of this is the first step, but it's not cookie cutter. Yeah. Not everyone has a community. Right. Not everyone has a mom that, that is going to yeah. step in the way my mom did. Not everyone has this. Not everyone has that. So the how is going to look different yeah. for everyone. But the real how is go within. Mm -hmm. Go within. Start healing. Don't point fingers. It's not your man's fault. It's not your man's fault. You chose that man. You laid down with that man. You married that man. You had babies with that man. You gave that man chances. You let that man cross your boundaries. So it's time to go back to yourself and look in the mirror and say, where did I allow my boundaries to get crossed? Where was my self-worth so low that I allowed him to do that? And mm. now I'm finally fed up with it. Well, we can't be mad at people for crossing our boundaries when we let them. Right. So be responsible. It's a tough one. Right. It's a tough one. It took me two years to really look in the mirror and be like, oh, yeah, this is why I have so much grace for him. Right. Because it wasn't. Because it's it took not two all people his to fault. get to this point. And I think it's important to know, too, for women, like, it's okay to change your mind. Yes. Queens can change their mind. Like, you may have tolerated all of these things back then, but when you wake up and you decide enough is enough, that's okay, too. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, just because you saw, he did this, he did that, he crossed his boundary, all these things, that doesn't mean your punishment is to yeah, stay like forever. To stay, yeah. Like I just posted on my social, it said, it's better to admit you walked in the wrong door than to stay in the wrong door. Yeah. Room. And so I love that you pointed that out and emphasized that because, yeah, don't put yourself in a box of shame right. and guilt and regret and overwhelm because whatever you focus on is going to grow. Put yourself in a state of hope and um, faith and belief that it's going to be okay. That's why you wanted me on here. Cause right. it's like, you're doing it with five. Right. And it's like, so it's like that, that's why like, you're the ultimate, like again, another cover, yeah. <laughs> like the cover of another situation that it can be done. It Is can. it easy? Absolutely not. Yeah. But so it can it, be though. done. And the work that you can do to come out on the other side is so beautiful yeah. and it needs to be seen. And like, you're standing yeah. here today, yeah. you're glowing, you're gorgeous. Like, and is it perfect? No. Is the life you had back? No. Yeah. But you're moving, you're growing, and like you're getting more closer to a life that truly makes you feel seen mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and fulfilled. Yeah. And that's really it. It's like you can do it. There's life after divorce or separation if you're not married. Um, that's the other thing. We get so hung up on titles. If you're if you're in a position of wifey, you're wifey. So mm -hmm. it's like it's not about, well, I didn't have kids or I wasn't married. It's like when you're ready to go from a partnership, that's never easy. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to grieve the loss of what isn't anymore of what you wanted it to be. Um, I think the biggest things I hear and that I went through was like, are you going to get chose again? Like, will you ever feel love again? The word get chose is where we go wrong. Mm -hmm. It's not, you will, you will attract the person for you when you choose yourself. Right. And when you start to heal yourself and love yourself. And that's what I've been on. I've been, and it's like, I am like, it's such the cliche thing, you know, like the girl gets single, she has her glow up and mm -hmm. she starts rah, rah. Like everyone was mad at what's the twin Tia and Tamara, the twin that everyone yes. dragged her for. Yeah. Like, girl, shut up. Like right. you left that good man and now you want to be on the victim. Like I'm loving myself, but right. it's a real thing. Yeah. It's a real thing that the only answer is to go find yourself. So like, don't let labels and fear of what people are going to think of you. Cause that's, I think the biggest plague in our community is the mask. Like mm -hmm. take, we all need to take the masks off. Mm -hmm. And I, I really, this is a call to action for our community. It's like, there's so many women in our community who 
have stepped up and like I said, sent me money and more than money giving me opportunities. There's women who have put me, you included, thank you. Like when I told you like, like not that you deserve this exclusive interview, but like I'm grateful that you wanted to give me the space to tell my story. But there's women who would still put me on their stage, like Dr. Barbara. Like she's not listening to the, the yeah. Don't put her. She's not even a wife, and she this and she that. She's like, I see you. I still see you worthy of being on my stage, being yeah. at my event. Um, you know, women, um, Denisha, like having me at her her conference. Like, you need to be here. You need to be here. Come, da da da. Like, like women who are still giving me opportunities, even though I'm flawed. Because it's like, let's actually be about empowerment. Let's mm -hmm. not say we're a community, NFL wives, let's band together. But then we're in all these little cliques whispering about right. each other. Like, cut the shit. Right. We need each other. We, they're, or, everyone's in the same We're all in, in the, the same, same boat. boat. Like, like it's, please. And it's like, to, that's another thing that I want to talk about. What I've seen is like when people break up or go through a separation, divorce, something, everyone disappears and mm -hmm. like that girl becomes like everyone's like oh, I don't want to talk to her anymore like I have a, a good friend who went through something like that and yeah. like everyone was gone and mm -hmm. like we weren't even good friends when it happened but I'm the type of person where like that's not I'm not gonna cut you off just because you're no longer in that world or yeah or anything like that if you're my friend you're my friend and even yeah. if you're not my friend and I but I know you well enough to check in and say hey are you mm -hmm. good like mm -hmm. I'm gonna send that because yeah. I know looking around most aren't going to and mm -hmm. like that has to be an isolating experience and if it was me I always tell myself like yeah if it was me what would I want people to do yeah and like uh one of my girlfriends was like girl everybody was gone nobody sent a text mm -hmm. nobody said mm -hmm. anything like it was just the elephant in the room she walks in and everyone's like what is she doing here you know did that happen to you once all of this yeah, um, so it was a mix. And, and one thing I want to say before I even get into my personal, this is like the nugget or the lesson yeah. I want people to take from this because I learned this and it was a big aha for me. Part of the refining process is to become a butterfly is to be a cocoon. Mm -hmm. So if you walk through this fire with resentment of who wasn't there for you, you're focused on the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. And I say that to say that I did that. I was the one like, they have no idea where I'm going. They have no idea who I am. When I walk in these rooms and I see their little, mm, and I hear and I hear through the grapevine what people are saying about my name, I'm like, mm, 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 yep, okay, keeping don't notes. keep <laughs> that same energy when right. I'm a star or an actress or when my stuff blows up and now you want me to be a sponsor or mm -hmm. you want me to come like that's that was my energy yeah like, okay. I'm gonna get my lick back <laughs> that energy doesn't work yeah. because here's the thing I when you talk about putting yourself in shoes I put myself in everybody's shoes there's so many people my sister went through some stuff I have best friends who walked this path before me and I was in my little bubble Mm. I wasn't calling on I wasn't being what women were being for me for my own sister mm. when she went through this but it wasn't because I was like ooh, she's going through that I'm gonna stay over here it was because I was over here like here's another baby and oh my god I gotta plan the baby shower and I got and my whole world and like it, it's like I have compassion and grace and forgiveness for the one percenters who our world is like, oh my God, my cake is not the right color. Right. <laughs> like we have the most, my nanny canceled on me. I have to find a new nanny. It's like, we don't know how to see that anymore as a luxury right. to be even complaining about a custom cake yes. and a nanny and the venue of our wedding not working out. It's like boo hoo right. for the world who's living in like paycheck to paycheck. Right. So when I was in that world, I wasn't checking on the people drowning in my own circle. Yeah. But they seen me online saying, her playbook is open, da da da. Mm. And I was changing the world and my own people were perishing. So mm. that was number one. What I learned was we can't change the world. This is my message again to our community. Yeah. Let's stop with the red carpets and with the charity events and with the camps and with the all the fundraising and saying, look at how great I am. I just received this award for being this, but your own family is falling apart. Do you know what your family members are going through? How, that 15 grand you popped out for a conference, could that have helped your sister? Mm. Could that have helped your best friend? So that was my lesson. 
So when I had to check my own self, I no longer had energy for all the people who are no longer showing up for me because yeah. I have a different perspective. Like yeah. they don't even have time to realize what I'm going right. through. They got their own stuff. Right. Whether it's transitioning from the league, whether it's wondering what team they're going to be on, whether it's planning their next event, that's mm. their reality. And I can't be mad at them that they're not stopping their reality to help me. Yeah. So that's number one. Stop being resentful that people are disappearing because people don't care. We're all in our own little world. Yeah. And so the other lesson was ask for help because I was like, my own church isn't even coming through for me. My this, and I was naming names and then I stopped and was like, but have you gone to the church? Yeah. You don't even go on Sunday. So why do you think they're going to help you? Right. So it's like, really, you have to be responsible and look in the mirror. Um, but I will say, yes, it, it has been isolating. But again, in that isolation, I needed to be by myself. I needed to figure out what I was made of. Yeah. Like I used to like I used to tell my brother, I don't want you to save me. He could have popped like umpteen thousand to me to just like make me allow me to breathe. Right. I said, nah, because then I'll just sit back and I'll breathe. Like I got to feel this pain. Yeah. I got to go through how to be more responsible with my money. And yeah. I mean, I never paid a bill in my life. Were you not? Um, in the mix, I feel like a lot of women in this position don't really know the finances, don't really know the bit, don't know what's going on. They're just living in the house, enjoying it. Did you have any idea of like, the that's the difference. I ran the money, like, like, um, like his money would go into a direct deposit into our joint account. And then I was responsible for paying all the bills. So okay. I'm sure Sweet. there was things I didn't know that where the money was all coming from and right. stuff, but I wasn't the one that had to ask him for money or okay. ask him to you pay were something. I was the one, but that's, that's part of the problem too, because I never had money. Um, like I do now cause I learned them, but in the, t at the time we were both kind of bad stewards of our money, which I've found many of our community are because we, we don't come from money. Right. So what you come from is what you create mm -hmm. in reality it, that they call it the lottery effect. I don't know if you ever heard it, but it's like when somebody, the average person who wins the lottery will end up broke again because that's their mindset. So they will find a way to get back to the reality mm -hmm. that they're used to instead of making this work for them yeah so in hindsight oh my gosh i wish i knew what i know now when i did have that because i would have been investing differently right i would have flipped some stuff into some stuff and i would have multiplied that but yeah. i wasn't i was just living paycheck Spend, to yeah paycheck you're like and i got spending it yeah like, okay cool and not and spending it responsibly i wasn't like blowing it in any in any way but yeah yeah i wasn't one of the women in the dark um and i have heard this somewhere that actually it's not a bad thing to let the man handle the money but as long as you don't feel like you have to like ask permission. You're not you in control. To, like, yeah. Communicate what right. you need and not have resentment with that. Yeah. Cause I've also seen women go through divorces and they don't even know what was, there. Yeah. Like, I don't even know what the bills were. Yeah. I don't know how much yeah. the mortgage was. I don't know yeah, how much no. I think. I knew all that, but for me, what I didn't know was the value of the dollar. So what I'm, what I mean by that is like, because the money was there and then I would just set all the bills on autopilot. Yeah. I wasn't actually connected Pay to yeah, it. That makes I wasn't sense. paying attention when I had to be like, like I would, I told this all the time. Like I used to be like, I, like her playbook. It's just X amount of dollars. Like to me, that was like, it's just, Nothing. what do you mean? Yeah. Like, this is pennies, right. but it's like to the person who didn't have like the one person. And you, I know there's levels to NFL money because most NFL players are not balling out of control, but like to the average person, a hundred dollars is That's gas money. money or yeah. dinner. Right. And when I got in that boat where it was like, we can't, we don't even step foot in Target. Yeah. Because five kids going into Target, even if they all want one $20 toy, there's the $100. Right. Right. So no, we can't go to Target. No, we can't go to Starbucks. It's $60 to go to Starbucks. Right. It's $100 to walk into Target. It's just to drive there. I don't want to use my gas because I need that gas to last. Like right. when I started getting into that, I was like, oh shit. Like I like didn't all realize that money. the value of the money Wow. until I had to be the one paying for it. And it had to be coming out of my pocket and I was like oh okay right <laughs> okay I really was spoiled I, like yeah I, you, a lot. I just I wanted I got it I mean even if you have never if you're not in this situation I think that's a lesson in itself of like I'm always and like my mom always like will be quick to remind me like your problems yeah. are not and he said there's people who are starving there's yeah. kids who and my mom works in education so like oh, so she's, she's constantly yeah, yeah like and she's helping kids 
like they, she helps get them into college and like a lot of them are like um dreamers so their parents are undocumented so like their parents they can't they don't have anything they're living in motels like but they're intelligent kids and and so she's getting them there but my mom like pays to like furnish their dorms and helps mm. them get like full rides and stuff wow. so like we'll help her with that because it's such a gr- like it just puts so much in a perspective yep. of like this issue is not worth Mm -hmm. the stress it's causing Mm -hmm. me. Yeah. Like Like it's just, yeah. Like it's not. And I always try to like remind my friends like, Oh, this is happening. I'm like, girl, that's a good problem to have. Right. If that's your biggest problem, go say a prayer and thank God. Because there's people with bigger things going on. And that's why I think like, again, I'm not saying I deserved what I'm going through, but I never felt like a victim. I was literally celebrating through every struggle. Cause I'm like, Oh my God, like, Thank you, God. I didn't know how ungrateful I was. I didn't mm-hmm. know how oblivious I was. I didn't know how disconnected I was. Like the the fiber of my being is so much more fruitful and wise now by going through this that I am so grateful I would never change it. Wow. Ever, ever, ever. Because it's priceless to to go to the depths mm-hmm. and to know who you are and to know what matters. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like So on that note, knowing who you are. You were Crystal David. Mm-hmm. Now you're going by Charlie. Talk to me about, yeah. because, and we talked a bit about this, like on the phone of mm-hmm. like, there were, you know, accusations of, of, of men, like a breakdown or like a, you didn't yeah. know who you were like, yeah. and, and people, and then it was like, you, it was like, you were posting a lot and then you stopped and it was like, oh my God, is she okay? Did yeah. she really have a breakdown or like identity crisis? Like, what, you know, and, and I like, we have to, I want to address this elephant in the room yeah. for people who are watching, like, if they're just tuning in to be like, let me see if this girl's still crazy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I am crazy. But, I love it here. But like you, you know, like, or it's like, oh, I heard she's on drugs or she's doing this or she's doing that. Yeah. There's all these whispers. Like yeah. we talked about what, where does Charlie come from and why did you feel the need to change your name to Charlie? Yeah. I love this question. So thank you for asking it. Cause, um, First of all, there is a YouTube and maybe like you guys can even link it in your notes if you want, where I literally just talked about why I changed my name and Mm -hmm. what it means. So I won't go into the detail of all of that. You guys can go watch it if you if you want more detail. But what I'll say about it is it it rooted from the first question was, oh, shoot, like, am I going to keep my maiden name or my married name? Mm -hmm. And it was funny because one day this is one of the tea I'll give you of like one of the things that has happened behind closed doors. It's not big at all, but it was funny. We were like um, filling out school papers and um, my ex filled out the paper of like from one of my daughters of like parents names and da da da, and he put Crystal Smith and I was like oh so he don't want me to have his last name so mm-hmm. I was like well then fuck him and like right. I don't want, I your, don't last want name. your last name anyway and, <laughs> and so I went on this search of like okay what am I gonna do because I loved my last name I loved my my college friends call me Smitty like I'm a Smith like that's my legacy so my mom is Smith my mm-hmm. brother is Smith my sister is Smith so I'm like I'm going back to Smith like thank you for the reminder of right. who I was before for you and like right. if you're ready to cut me off I don't want to share a last name with your new bitch anyway so like right. that's where my head went first so then I started praying about it and like being like what am I going to do because at the same time I loved being Crystal David mm-hmm. I loved it like I told you on the phone I'll always give him credit where credit's due that he put me on mm-hmm. I wouldn't be in the NFL wife community if I wasn't his wife mm-hmm. or maybe I would have been with someone else right. but you know what I'm saying yeah. like we the don't way know things shoulda out, coulda woulda right. this is what it was mm-hmm. I'm not changing my name because it's like I don't like who I was I don't like him I will always love him I have five babies with him I will always give him the regard that he put me on and so there was a part of me that didn't want to let go of David and Mm -hmm. I was like you know it's a cool name I always liked having first two two first names and like I do like Crystal David it's cool um but this is what I realized when I simultaneously I started tapping into acting and part of what I learned as a natural actress, I've never thought of myself as an actress Mm -hmm. ever, but I was being told in that industry by people who were discovering me, like, you're a natural. I got contracted for a lead role in a film. And I'm like, like me, like what? And in that, as I started studying the crafts, like I think of Marilyn Monroe, like I never even knew that wasn't her birth name. Mm -hmm. Her, Her birth name is not Marilyn Monroe. When you look at our stars there's so many people who have an alter ego they have Mm -hmm. another name they have a stage name and so for me because i know the power of alter egos 
um, of like in her playbook, I teach it your crown or your crutch. Like every moment we, we live and wake up and, and go through life, we have a choice to wear our crown and be our higher self. Who were you made when God created you or your crutch? Who did you decide you are because of your childhood trauma? Mm. What people say about you, your lower vibration, limiting beliefs, like I'm not enough. I'm not good enough. I don't know enough. That's who Crystal was. Crystal is a people pleaser. She will self-sacrifice. She will lay her body down and let you run over her just so you can get to the other side. Yeah. Crystal um, doesn't see herself. Crystal will dim her light so other people can feel comfortable because I always felt like I'm too perfect. Like, I'll admit that I thought I'm beautiful. I have an NFL husband. I have money in the bank. I have five beautiful children. I snapped back like nobody's business. <laughs> I... um. I am talented. I'm charismatic. People love me. Like, I literally was like, I don't have any problems. Yeah. I literally knew that. So I was the opposite where I was just like, dang. Like, it's not like I was asking for problems, but I kind of was. I kind of was like, God, like... I don't want to go through anything tragic, so please just help me come to peace with that. It's okay for me to have a smooth life. Yeah. That it's okay that I don't have a rough story or rough. And I mean, it wasn't perfect single mom household, but my mom did. I mean, we didn't miss a beat. Right. And I you, wasn't. You had like, a good life. Yeah. We, yeah. I, my, we had a pool, yeah. four bedrooms. Like we did not <laughs> struggle the way that the average person, like who I was comparing myself to. So what I realized was that. I'm no longer willing to dim my light to who much is given, much is required. Mm -hmm. And so because God gave me this position of power and um, like all of these gifts that I have, I'm meant to be in a role of like on the screen or on a stage or on a podcast or writing a book or, you know, people looking at me like I want what she has. That's mm -hmm. why her playbook started. That's why Fox Project started. That's why the purpose guide, all of my programs I've ever created came from people abundantly asking me, how do you do that? Right. How do you like how how I can't even function with one kid? I don't even have kids, and you have five, and you're right. still smiling, smiling and, and love your man. And and yeah, yeah, like you look, it, it, looked, it looked perfect. Yeah. And I would be like, well, first of all, because I don't worry about half the shit y'all worry about. Right. Y'all are worried about the wrong things. Right. So like when I realized I was just gifted in that way, we're all gifted in a different way. So Charlie, the name means free spirit. It means. Um, playful, youthful, and I also love that it's a boy-girl name, so it represents me in my divine masculine and my divine feminine. Mm -hmm. It represents me um, I believe the secret sauce is play. That's why I had her playbook because the sauce to life, the fountain of youth is play. Stop taking everything so seriously. Nothing is that serious. Yeah. It, like everything that happens in life is a part of life. Mm -hmm. From the deepest, deepest depths to the highest highs, don't get too stuck on any of them because they all change and transition. Yeah. So Charlie is my reminder to be powerful and playful and purposeful and passionate and to be in my pleasure like it's not a sin to follow what feels good yeah now you do have to guard that like right. not everything that feels good is it's meant good. to be right. yeah. and good for you but right. like pleasure is not bad and so charlie just it's a reminder when because i'm crystal like i even you guys will see as i talk and i talk about myself you i usually crystal. automatically say crystal because mm -hmm. i'll always be her i don't i love my name and then I was named Crystal Charlene after my grandma, who's regal and just incredible. So Charlie was a spinoff of Charlene because okay. I didn't want to like just get rid of my name. Yeah. I love my name. So um, it was a separation of those, where I'm going because I'm, I'm going to be such a public figure. Mm -hmm. I wanted to separate who knows me, knows me. Like if you know me as Crystal, it's yeah. like, oh, you, can't, you either did some research right. or you, you know someone who knows someone that knows me. Right. And so it's like it was an indicator for me. It was a protection mechanism because I don't want people to Google Crystal David. And I mean, I'm sorry, when they Google Charlie Rain, all of my Crystal David stuff isn't going to come up right away. So they'll be able to experience my new content so, versus yeah. all my old stuff. And then those who want to go dig, go dig and Google Crystal David and have fun. But it's like, um, so it wasn't a midlife crisis. Is it wasn't me erasing my past identity. It was me choosing an alter ego and saying, Charlie is my Beyonce. 
Like that's like, like Sasha my Fierce. Be, my yeah. Sasha Fierce. Thank yeah. you. Like Beyonce mm-hmm. and Sasha Fierce. Charlie is my Sasha Fierce. Like yeah. when I that's your crown. Uh, when I put my crown on every day, you guys will call me Charlie, and it'll be a reminder. Like that's not even my name. So it it triggers my brain of like, oh yeah, it's I'm time Charlie. to perform. Yeah, it's, I'm that girl. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm not gonna pretend I'm not that girl because I am that girl, and yeah. I want every woman to have that confidence in her own way. That's why. You know, I have her playbook for people to learn their alter ego, which is really just your higher self. It's really just getting back to know who were you at birth, you know? And it was biblical too. In the Bible, Paul, Saul became Paul and God gave different names to different people once Mm -hmm. they went through that baptism of refinement and they really stepped into their Christ consciousness and under, like it, it is an offensiveness I believe to God our creator to not know who you are and to not walk in your power absolutely so how dare you come to earth and then play small right I love that I think I'm I'm so glad that you explained that because on social media like it's like I mean our attention spans are so Mm -hmm, quick mm -hmm. so you I remember you posting like you know but like you don't even take the time to like oh let me go and fully understand it it's just like Oh, like, was she okay, on? No, yeah, like, thing, like, she, yeah, like, and I knew you as Crystal. Like, when I met you, you were yeah, Crystal. Yeah. And so, like, and but I love that, like, now I have a, d- a different understanding mm-hmm. of why, and it, it's so much deeper. And, like, you had to, not to say everyone has to go through something to have, to create, you know, to yeah. have that new identity and yeah. all of those things. It's just that has tapped you into and like that's your reminder yeah. of why yeah okay i want to like get near wrapping up because we, we yeah, could talk know, all we day could like all day. six hours for sure, for sure. but i do want to ask you how are you balancing or like how do you raise five girls with what you've been through mm-hmm. and are are they okay are you okay yeah um we are okay um i think what's so beautiful about my daughters is and like like to my daughter, my oldest, Justelle, I told her, I said, Stelly, I know what you're going through is so hard, but kind of like what we talked about, like, I'm like, you go to a $30,000 a year school, mm-hmm. like you're about to go on a scholarship on soccer, like you have two parents, um, you have two grandmothers, you have aunties, you have a home, like, like I try to recalibrate her that you are not your circumstances mm-hmm. and what they're going through is more emotional, not tangible. Mm-hmm. And so it's allowing me to her playbook, my children, it's allowing me to equip them with the power. And I told her, I said, I am so blessed and grateful that you guys are learning God's power at 16 and 12 and 10 and eight and almost six instead of 37. Yeah. I wish it didn't take me 37 years to really activate my power Mm -hmm. and really know God. Like, you know, when they say God is good all the time and all the time God is good and won't he do it and all through, um, all things, I can do all things through Christ. We, we, Pull them out, yeah. But do we actually believe that? Right. No, I understand what it means to be like, okay, God, that water just got turned off. My phone bill is about to get turned off. Which bill should I pay? Where's the money going to come? And for it to just happen. Mm -hmm. I understand what it means to depend on God as my source. Mm -hmm. Not just hypothetically saying it. Right. So I think my kids are better than ever because they've experienced some adversity. Mm -hmm. They had had a plush little life. Right. Private school, parents, nice cars. Right. They didn't know shit. Right. So now I'm resting assured that they're not going to get swallowed whole. Like I almost did when I hit the streets and the world saw how green I was and they said, oh, we about to get her. Right. And so I love that. Um, The how is through the village. My mom, my my family, um, and my ex, like, even though I, I'm not saying I 100% agree with how um, he is showing up. See, I like there is a lot of single moms who don't have the option of the baby daddy taking care of the kids. Mm-hmm. He's out. Mm-hmm. He's gone. Not it's not just financial. It's not even I've, physical. Right. So for me, I know the value of him physically still being there mm-hmm. because that allows me to still work and to still get on my feet. And so I'm grateful that he is still showing up as a father in that way and that he's still taking his kids when it's his turn. And in that, it's allowed me to have a duality of like when I have my kids, I didn't realize how much of a stressed out mom I was until I had the break. And now I love that I'm able to like enjoy being with them and like and like it, like I, I call I'm about to get ready to do some content called Disneyland mom because it's like oh that's how them dads be like yeah of course <laughs> it's all fun and games when you only have them every other weekend so right. you can 
throw money and where y'all want to go. Right, where the mom that. is like, ah, I can't do anything fun because I'm feeding you. Like, right. You know, and so yeah. now that I'm able to find that balance, it's, it's cool because I feel like a Disneyland mom because I found my footing where like, um, you know, I'm able to provide for them and I'm able to provide for myself and take care of myself. So the how has just been realizing really what it means to put my mask on first and mm -hmm. realizing that I'd rather give up a little bit more time for my kids temporarily and take his help so that I can do the work to heal, to breathe, to sleep in sometimes. Like, like it, I do not condone the superwoman cape. Yeah. I don't. It kills women. It kills women to think we don't need rest. Um, having 50-50 at one point, I was like, I got to figure out a way to teach this to regular couples. Like, mm -hmm. how can you do some 50-50 stuff? Like, how can you make sure that wifey mommy gets a break? Yeah. And not just without the kids, literally the mental break. Because even when I wasn't with my kids, we're still responsible for computing. Right. Schedules. Food, and schedules, yeah. carpool, da, 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 da. You're never off. Right. So, like, whether it's hiring help or enrolling your partner to help you in different ways, it's so important to ask for help. Mm. And I believe that I've been in my journey for so long because I wasn't willing to surrender. When I finally, I had a car accident and I had another car accident and those accidents happened right when I couldn't even afford to pay the deductible. And it was like all these things that were happening where I was like, what the f Like, what yeah. else do you want me to do? Yeah. I get it. Like, what are you doing? And blah, 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 me and God are just like going at it. Yeah. And it's like, oh, I'm still resisting the help. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm being forced to receive it, but yeah. I'm not asking for it. People are being like, well, I'll pay this because I see you drowning. I right. guess I'll save you instead of me saying, hey, I think I'm drowning. Can you help me? Right. And then it's easy at that point to just pull someone up. But when you let yourself just drown, it's like not everyone has people to pull them up. Some people actually die. Right. That's when you become addicted to substances. That's yeah. when you go numb out and then just go marry someone again just for money. Because please believe I'm tempted to tap out. Out right. and just like let a man take care of me right. again, but I'm not going to be fulfilled in that. My right. spirit would die. Right. So no, like don't let yourself die. Ask for help and further than asking it, receive it. If you want to be abundant in money and time and energy and freedom, you have to be willing to receive because mm. abundance comes from reciprocity and it comes from that like, you know, that circle. Synergy. Yeah. And so that was like my biggest lesson. But it's it's the biggest how that I've been making it. Yeah. So you are where are you now? What's next? <sighs> oh, my God. That's like so exciting. <laughs> um, I love my life. I, I am so alive. I'm I'm if I could really be honest about where I'm at right in this situation, y'all would be like, OK, she is crazy. <laughs> she really is crazy. But that's faith. See, yeah. if you look at every if you look at every Bible story, there is when the power happened. It was when they were at their weakest because God wants all the glory. Mm -hmm. God wants to be the source. So you, depending on how willing you are to work with the source is how far in the depths you're going to have to go to see the light. But mm -hmm. I finally got it. And so what that means for me is that the tables are turning. I see justice underway. I see darkness that has been against me. No weapon formed against me shall prosper is something that has held me through. Has, the vengeance is not mine. It's the Lord. Because I've been faithful to that and I, I did silence myself and yeah. I did get obedient to God saying, be quiet. Let me do this. Mm -hmm. This is not for you to out and point fingers because when you point the fingers, there's three more back at you. Let, you go worry about those three fingers and let me handle this over mm -hmm. here. I'm seeing the redemption. I'm seeing um, healing. I feel so healed. So what's next in that world is like I am preparing myself to be a partner again. I am preparing myself to be a queen with a king. I mm -hmm. am preparing myself to build an empire with a man and a legacy that includes me and my babies. And if I have more, maybe if I don't, I'm okay either way. Um, and her playbook is thriving. I just relaunched it and I'm, I have her playbook live, which is like behind the scenes access to all kinds of stuff like me writing my book. It's behind the scenes to my film that we're creating. It's behind the scenes to all my tools and access to all my like work. Okay. And then her playbook pro for just athletes wise. Cause I know that they love that exclusivity. So yeah. that is the thing. And then 
her playbook for college students. Like, ugh, I'm so excited about that because I really want to reach the youth. I want to reach the women where I was when I had that yeah. crossing point. Be where, who you wish you had. Yeah, be who I wish I had when I was in college and I was dating and I felt like I was in love and someone to just be like, okay, cool. Like, let's work with that, but let's slow down. Right. Let's just take a minute and let's make sure you know who you are, you know what you want, and let's mm. make sure you're your pure, healed, authentic self before you lock in and then go create a life that one day at some point your true self will rear its head yeah and men do that too they do it men well. men you know women or like especially strong-willed women i like i i think of like people who are like they run that relationship the women do so the men like get in line and mm -hmm. they like are the mm -hmm. great guys and you know but then like someday they wake up and they're like you know what i don't like being bossed around yeah. i don't like this and like yeah. that happens and the girl's like I don't know who this man is. Like, he's so mean and like, he used to be so sweet. I'm like, well, girl, he got tired of you yeah. yapping at him yeah. all the time. You know, like, so yeah. it, it goes both ways. And I think knowing who you are and then also being receptive of your partner's change is mm -hmm. like such a, is mm -hmm. such a game changer. Like my yeah. husband and I do a lot of books but they like a question a day. Mm, we got one that. when we were like engaged and someone gifted it to us. And then we just have, we buy them on Amazon and we just do them. And like, I love it because when we are, when we do a question and it might be something like, who's your favorite friend of your spouse, right? I'm mm -hmm. thinking like, oh, I know who it is. Because yeah, yeah. someone who's around. And they'll say someone else like, and it, maybe it changes in I a couple years. That. And you're like, really? Why? Like you used to think she was annoying. Like, no, but she shows up for you. And she's this, and you notice the little changes. We don't like even our favorite color, yeah. my favorite color then versus now. I'm like, yeah. oh, I love this. You know, we change. And mm -hmm. even if it's really little, those little things become so big yeah. over time and what I've like realized. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, I'm like, we're never going to stop doing the question books because yeah. those little things of like his favorite color, his favorite food right now, his like, what's a perfect day look like? That has changed. It will change. And, yeah, or like a pet that. peeve of his. Send me the I'll send it to you. Like yeah. his pet peeve of me. Like I would have never guessed. I was like, that. let me find out that judge. Like we were cracking <laughs> up because we didn't know. That? I want to know. You wanna, I'll tell you later. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> but like it was, it's not like a big deal, but like it was just so funny. Like, and you don't <laughs> think, you don't ask like, what do I do that annoys you? Yeah. And it's not that it annoys you where he's like, oh, like it's just like, why do you do that? Yeah, like yeah, I never, yeah. and you don't realize in your habits. Like, yeah, yeah. I don't even remember what mine was for him, but we were just cracking up in bed. We do it before bed and it just That's sparks so a great cute. conversation. And we like, we'll talk about something for like 10, 15 minutes. Like, okay, all right, time yeah, to go to bed. I but it's like, you book. learn something new yeah. and like, don't stop learning about yeah. who, you, who that is. And what's so powerful, I know we're wrapping up, but yeah. this is like, just to say behind that, I had um, heard someone I study, she's another like relationship expert. And she said, you should never think you know your partner mm -hmm. because we're so vast as humans that there's always something to learn and what what it is is that we're so surface we're not taught that's why I said send me that book link that book in your notes for like sure. like people need that and that's why I wanted to like emphasize it because even for me as I'm like I said this is my first time dating I have not dated my whole time being single this is my first time dating and I'm like this is weird mm -hmm. because I all I know how to do is be a wife so I just want to jump straight to like okay <laughs> you're ready right right, like, right. you would do one. this and it's like girl be real like you were with someone for 18 years and yeah. didn't even know them so right. like go slow but mm -hmm. it's like I don't even really know how to get to know people because I know how to get to know myself but it's like when you start to turn that to someone else those little questions are where you really get to know oh. someone because it's easy for someone to say this is my job and this is my passion and my purpose and those big questions right. but it's those little ones like why do you eat like that yeah <laughs> and then it's like oh well when I was a kid and like you learn and like you, fun the little, quirky yeah, stories or like your favorite family like, member I didn't even know you had a brother right <laughs> like, but you want to marry me right. okay cool like you you don't even know my whole family member's name, but mm -hmm. you were ready to like. And so that's something that I've been laughing about myself because I am such a lover. It's like, girl, you skip all the little down. things. I skip over all yeah. the stuff that matters. So, and that's what she said. Just like, you will always have, like, you can always reinvent with that person mm -hmm. because like evolution is a part of humanity. So I think that's beautiful that you guys yeah. do that. Is there anything that you would want to share? 
that we, we haven't shared covered. so much. I think what I want to say is because I already feel the vulnerability hangover coming over me. And I, that's my term for when you share so Overshare much. Overshare and then you're like, it's oh, like, what did I say? I'm, I'm the queen of that. I'm Even the queen how of you're that. like, I'll tell you later. I'm like, she doesn't want to tell her quirk and or like her ick. And I'm like, I just told like my whole. Oh, but, no, no, but no. I get not, it. I yeah. get it. It's not that. But I'm just saying like, it's like that of like, oh, my God, what did I share? I know I'm supposed to be moving in silence. Did I share too much? But this is the thing. I learned about myself. My gift is my transparency and my vulnerability. Yeah. And so I'm going to be messy at the end of the day. Like there's so much I didn't share. And I know that. So I'm like, okay, I think we're good. I think there's like, you know, of course people may disagree or whatever, but my, what I would love to just say is my ending thing is like, first of all, thank you again for having me. And thank you to anyone who made it this far listening. Cause I know <laughs> that we do have attention spans yeah. and, um, not everyone does, but, um, my hope for everybody listening, male and female, is to understand that there is no one way. There is no one size fits all. Because when I used to teach her playbook, it was very much so how to keep the spark alive. What if the spark is supposed to stay dead and you're supposed to move on? Yeah. Or it was like how to keep your man happy, how to keep your... It was like, how about if that is expired? So what, I, what my point is, is like, um, do not compare your story to anybody's like take what I've said today and and leave what doesn't resonate and just you know for every one person who's listening there may be just one thing that they needed to take from this you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying and so that to me I feel like I want it to be said because I'm the type that when someone speaks I take it as bible mm -hmm. and then I'll like really be like oh dang well I was doing this but then they said that so then I go over here Sweet. and it's like oh wait and then they and then I've spent my life doing this this because if you stand for nothing you'll fall for anything right. so this is why I say get to know who you are what is your beliefs what is your moral compass what are what's your anchor mm -hmm. and from that place then don't let the world influence you because everyone has a podcast now podcasts are now and this isn't offense to us because we're all podcasters this is just saying that it's dangerous right. because not everyone is saying stuff that's going to serve you. So mm -hmm. you have to now have your radar on not just your ears, but your, your spirit needs to be intact. Cause if your spirit is not intact, if you don't know how to listen to your discernment and your intuition, you're going to be misled because just because you see it in a little reel or a, a gif or a meme does it not mean it's true, but we really think memes are true. Like, Ooh, see, I knew that was true. And then you <laughs> save it and you share it. That is not true. Mm -hmm. Just cause someone wrote it on Canva right. for free. Right. They didn't even have pro. Right. <laughs> they didn't even pay for that. Right. Like stop it. I'm not sorry. everything on social media is the truth. Correct. It's true for somebody in some season of their life. But like you said, that may be true for a college student, but mm -hmm. you're a grown woman with mm -hmm. five kids. Stop listening to that, Crystal. Like, you right. know, I'm talking to myself, right. but I'm giving it to the world because we're all guilty of it to some degree. Right. So get your spirit in check. And if you don't know how to do that, of course, I'm going to plug her playbook, her playbook. But Absolutely. To say what her playbook is, is it's just doing the work. So go find some place you feel safe doing the work. And doing the work means diving into you. Mm -hmm. Who are you? What do you, what floats your boat? How do you know yourself, love yourself, be yourself? Mm -hmm. um, for me personally, I'm focusing on women who want to be feminine, fulfilled, and fully expressed. And another thing that's coming is his playbook. So I'm working on that with okay. men to bring the guy side because I would always get the feedback like I love your work but my guy needs it now like yeah. I want my guy to catch up to yeah, par like how me. you guys are doing yeah. it together and so I if there's any men listening to this where you you know disagreed with something I said or you want to help me shift my perspective I'm very open and teachable I'm not a man I'm not trying to be a man I don't want to be a man I love you kings we need our kings to rise up in your divine masculine so and women we need y'all to be healed in your divine feminine I know those are woo woo words but that just to me means divine means your divinity like mm -hmm. how God made you perfectly healed but then life took you out that's divine it's healed it's whole and then masculine feminine doesn't mean male female it just means our our we're just intact so yeah. um if there's any men who want to um be a part of me building his playbook that's what i'm doing i'm interviewing men based on my principles so that women can get more men's perspectives yeah. on like we know we're a little crazy we know we're a little delulu <laughs> we know we act out of emotion and y'all act out of logic but let's talk about it because if we hear it we may move differently mm -hmm. we just don't know what we don't know 
Right. You know, and maybe we can create a safe space to have these conversations and together we could work together to heal relationships and not be against each other. We need each other. For sure. We need each other. So we can't be men against women. We got to start working together and helping each other move different. Yeah. Okay. Where can everyone find you on social media? Um, so it's Charlie X Rain, R-E-I-G-N, and then her playbook live. Um, so those are the two. And then everything's there. Like my link in bio has everything. Mm-hmm. And from there, you can just kind of trickle out. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you, thank you. Charlie, for coming thank on you, you. and talking and sharing your story and being so open and so vulnerable, um, especially for so many people who have followed you. I think this is like, a, I feel like, at ease like I guess for you like it's just because you were quiet for the last two years Mm -hmm. I'm like is she okay like what happened and (laughs) I'm good and I'm honored that you like brought this on my podcast and I'm I'm new to this world but it's I really feel called to it and I feel like God has just placed this on my heart and I have never felt like so in tune with my purpose than I do now so I'm just beyond honored that yeah. you would do this with me. I'm like low key tearing up now. No, you should. Um, but like, I do appreciate it's you. Huge. Thank you guys for joining us on another episode of Supporting His Fulfilling Yours. Be sure to follow Charlie on social media and then download this episode. Follow the podcast so you can get the latest updates on all that we're doing. And we appreciate your guys' support. So we'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Yay! Uh, how long did we do? Like an hour and a half, probably. Oh, that's not... That's oh, no, I lied. Two hours. The life of supporting his doesn't always equate to fulfilling yours. And if you take anything from this episode, I really hope that you see the importance of fulfilling yourself, taking the time to learn your passions, your value, and most of all, your purpose. Remember, we are what we attract. Now be sure to download this episode and send it to a friend who may need to hear this message. I want to thank you for your support, and I'm so grateful to have you as a part of this growing community. See you next time.